Welcome back to Backcountry Amateur Radio, guys. Um, this is going to be part three of my DIY dipole. This little thing has been great. I've gotten really great signal reports, um, but I am going to modify it or create some additional legs to essentially do kind of the linked dipole idea and be able to have an 80 meter Envis antenna with this. Um, so basically, making it short and simple, I need to add about 29 or 30 feet on each end of each leg, I guess. So on each leg or each side of the dipole. And that should accomplish the frequency that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. And essentially the, the math is pretty basic. Here's, here's some slides on that um, using a really cool app for the, this is for the iOS, or the iPhone, and it allows you to calculate antenna sizes or lengths based on the frequencies you wanna use, in this case for a dipole. It also has calculators for Yagis and things like that. And uh, anyway, this is really cool. And it's, if you wanna upgrade to Pro and support the, uh, the app developer, then it's 199 forever. And it already offers so much for free, so it's kinda cool. Anyway, uh, let's get to it. All right, so what you see in the background is kind of my workbench. I work on a uh, bike suspension for uh, like mountain bikes, road bikes. So don't mind all that other stuff. Every ham's workbench is full of, of additional things. Anyway, so I'm going to just trim off these old connectors because I need to make these connectors uh, live instead of insulated. And they're insulated by the, uh, the shield on the wire. And in order to simplify the process, I'm actually going to cut this off, this, this shielding here, and, and do that in the vise to prevent myself from cutting myself. Having a vise when you're working on this stuff is so handy. There we go, one. Basically my plan is to use uh, some small screws to link these together. I'm gonna use eyelets to connect them. It's just so much cable uh, or so much wire. I figure this is probably a pretty decent way to do this. So essentially this silicone wire is just so so fragile but this is silicone insulation it just cuts for nothing so in order to prevent myself from cutting the actual wire i'm going to trim back a little bit with just a razor blade and it comes off really easy so i just kind of gently roll it and you can see it looks really dangerous but there's basically no pressure and off it comes. So I twist it and then I fold it. And then I'm gonna come back for my crimps and I'm gonna crimp this into place. And then when I am ready to finalize this project, I'll warm up the soldering iron. I'm gonna go back through and solder all these points. just to make sure it holds. And maybe one day I'll change the way this whole thing's laid out. Um, that little plastic piece is super silly, and ex but it works. My little, my little winder frame. What I really would like to do is change it so that it's got an integrated point to mount on top of my mast. So there's that. So now it is time to count out a whole bunch of wire. I need, I think what I do, based on my math, is about 30 feet per leg, right? So that'll hopefully give me some room to work with. 
I'm going to tune it for about 3.8 megahertz. And um, that way the center is pretty low and I can maybe get into the digital realm if I need to. And the, uh, the other end of the antenna, I will leave. Uh, it just has a kind of raw wire or bare, bare wire or whatever, insulated, but just not finish it with the loops of the eyelets or the ring terminals until the, the antenna is tuned, ready to finalize. So I went to a park, a city park, and I found two trees that are far enough apart, just about the right distance apart, uh, joined the wires and put it up in the sky, which was actually, it takes a little while to do this when you've got so much wire, there's so much walking between trees in order to get things up properly. And then I put the mass up in the middle. My initial read on the SWR wasn't too far off. It was 3.75 megahertz initially, um, so I cut off about 11 and a half inches off of each end and was able to bring it into 3.8 to 3.9 megahertz with an SWR of about 1.5 to 1, which is fantastic. Um, the frequency is so low and the wavelengths are so large that uh, these adjustments to the antenna have to be pretty dramatic. So in order to do digital, I'm going to have to add three feet on the end of each of the of this of each leg of the antenna but for now this thing's ready to test and i'll be sharing that in the next video on this antenna if you like this please give it a thumbs up it helps with the youtube algorithm thank you for watching everybody uh, please consider subscribing and uh i'll catch you down the trail take care seven three